in this video, we'll be looking at two ways that we can prove triangles congruent. Instead of just looking at all the angles and sides, we're going to learn two quick ways to show it. The idea of congruency is simple. Two geometric figures with exactly the same size and the same shape. It doesn't matter how they're rotated, it just matters that their size and shape is the same. So how much do we need to know for triangles to prove that they are congruent? Well, first off, let's look at our side, side, side postulate. SSS is the way we're going to abbreviate frequently. We know that if AB is congruent to DE, so you see the one little tick mark, and BC is congruent to EF, two tick marks, and AC is congruent to DF, three tick marks, then we can tell that all of triangle ABC is congruent to all of triangle DEF. So in other words, if we know that three sides of one triangle, ABC for example, are congruent to three sides of another triangle, DEF, then we know that the two triangles are going to be congruent triangles. Another way we can tell triangles are congruent is by using the side angle side postulate, the SAS postulate. This one says that I have two sides that are congruent in one triangle to two sides of another triangle. And the included angle, in other words, the angle between the two sides is also congruent. So AB is congruent to DE, angle A is congruent to angle D, and AC is congruent to DF. So that angle between the two sides is congruent. If I know those three things to be true, then I know the triangles are also congruent. So let's talk a little more about what that word included angle means. And let's look at it. So if I have triangle IGH here, the included angle will be the one between the two sides. So the two sides I know are congruent are IG and GH. The angle between those is angle G. So that's the included angle. On this triangle, IGH, I know about side IG, side IH. So in other words, the angle between those is angle I. Interesting, if you look at IG and IH, I shows up in both of those. Same thing here, IG and GH, those are your two sides you're given. G shows up in both of those, so G is the included angle there. And finally, here I have triangle IGH, where I know IH has a congruency, GH has a congruency, so the angle between them is angle H. Okay, And this is just going through it once again, showing how they all work. So let's name the included angle. Take a second, pause it, and try to name the included angle for each of these sides. It's probably obvious that it was highlighted for you, but if you have YE, and ES, the angle between those two sides is angle E. So that's the included angle. ES and YS, the included angle would be F. And YS and YE, those segments, the included angle would be Y. And there it goes again, giving you the answers. Warning, there is no such thing as an SSA postulate. If that angle is not included between the two sides, and you say that it's SAS, you are wrong. SSA does not work. Those triangles would not be congruent necessarily because SSA is not a postulate that we use. Nor is AAA. We cannot prove triangles are congruent by comparing three angles of one triangle to three angles of another triangle. So let's name the postulates here. What would I use to prove this top one on the left? Well, you have a side, an angle, and a side of one triangle congruent to a side, an angle, and a side of another triangle. So you have SAS congruence there. On this one down here, you have a side, a side, and an angle. You have to ask yourself, is the angle between the two sides? The answer is no. So that would be SSA. And SSA does not work. And finally, Look at the last one. What do you think the last one will be? Well, I'm comparing three sides. So it has to be side, side, side. And there it goes, SAS, SSA, and, which does not work, SSS. All right, pause the video and try these three out. All 
All right, the first one, AAA, was that one of the ones we could use? No, AAA was not a postulate we could use. The next one was SAS, side, angle, side, because the angle is between the sides. And finally, the third one was SSA, because you have side, side, angle. And was that one we could use? Well, no, it was not. All right, some additional pieces of information that are going to be very important as you try to prove is if you look at these two triangles, they share a side. So that side is going to be congruent to itself because it's the same side. It's something we would call the reflexive property. Because it's congruent to itself, it reflects upon itself. So in this case, this will be congruent by side, angle, side. On the next triangles, you'll notice they have vertical angles. If you remembered earlier in the year, we learned that vertical angles are always going to be congruent. So be careful when you're doing these that you look for vertical angles. And vertical angles will lead me to say that this is side, angle, side. So look at the next two and determine what you think they'll be. All right, hopefully you paused the video and you saw those. On the third one, I can add my vertical angles in, and I will see that I have SAS once again. And on my fourth one, I can add my reflexive side. That's equal to itself. But I'm still going to get SSA, which of course is not a property or a postulate that we can use. Okay, So here I have two triangles. And obviously I don't have enough information up front to prove they're congruent. So we have to determine, to prove by SAS they're congruent, what else would I have to absolutely know here? Well, I have a side, an angle, and I need, if it's SAS, for that angle to be included between the sides. So I would need AC to be congruent to FD. That's what I need to prove that these would be congruent using SAS. Try this one right here by pausing the video and writing down what you believe you need to prove these triangles are congruent by SAS. Okay. Oops, didn't give us the answer there. But we know that if we have a side and an angle, we need the other side to be congruent in order to prove SAS. So I need MK to be congruent to TU in order to show these are congruent by SAS. 